Talk about why you begin with the bombing of Pearl Harbor and take us through what are now called, well, various things, but territories, what were called colonies, and the language changed. But start with Pearl Harbor. Yeah, it's such an extraordinary moment, because it's one of the most familiar moments in U.S. history. And when most people of the United States think about Pearl Harbor, what they think about is Japan attacked the United States, and it attacked it by bombing Pearl Harbor, and that drew the United States into the war. And that was the only time that the United States was directly attacked in the war. Uh, but of course, what actually happened is uh, it wasn't just uh, Hawaii that Japan was attacking. Japan was launching an attack on the United States' Pacific territories, as well as Britain's Pacific territories and Thailand. So in a near simultaneous attack, this all happened within hours, uh, the Japanese attacked the Philippines, Guam, Wake Island, and Hawaii. And the attack on the Philippines, militarily, was just as bad as the attack on Hawaii. And for that reason, it was unclear to reporters initially how to say what happened. Uh, if you look at the early newspapers that, you know, uh, some of them say, the Japanese attack uh, Philippines and Guam, others say, Japanese attack uh, the Philippines and Hawaii. Um, that notion that the Philippines and Hawaii were the really important targets to emphasize, um, that's how it appears in Eleanor Roosevelt's first speech. That's how it appears in uh, a draft of the Pearl Harbor speech that um, FDR's Undersecretary of State wrote. And that's how it appeared in FDR's own first draft of the speech, uh, emphasizing both targets. But what's amazing is that you can see FDR uh, going through, thinking through that, thinking through the implications of trying to explain to the country uh, that the Philippines had been attacked and this was cause for the United States to go to war. And it seems to me that he's quite clearly uncomfortable with that implication, worrying whether an attack on the Philippines would really count as a cause for war in the United States. And we have a lot of opinion polls from the time which suggest that most people who were living in the U.S. mainland didn't want to see the U.S. military come to the defense of the far western territories of the United States, like the Philippines and Guam. So what FDR did is two things. First of all, he crossed out prominent references to the Philippines and just focused it on Hawaii. Hawaii was also a territory, not a state, but it had significantly larger white population and it was closer to the mainland. Uh, and then, even then, it seems like he felt a little nervous that, about whether Hawaii would count as the United States for the purposes of you know, uh, rallying the nation to war. Uh, and indeed, opinion polls suggest that only 55 percent of the country thought the U.S. military should defend the territory of Hawaii uh, in the case of war. Uh, so he inserted the word American. Uh, in his descriptor. So it's not just the Japanese bomb, as it initially said in his speech, uh, the island of Oahu, but that they bomb the American island of Oahu. Uh, so you can see what he's doing is trying to round Hawaii up to American uh, and the Philippines and Guam. He kind of regards as, you know, too far gone and just uh, takes them out uh, from prominent references of the speech and tucks them in the back. And I think that has a lot to do with why a lot of people in the United States today don't realize that. Um, that attack was not just on Hawaii alone. Um, and it's a real pity that they don't realize it, because the attack on Pearl Harbor was just that. It was an attack. Uh, the Japanese never came back. It was uh, militarily um, damaging, but it didn't result in Hawaii being invaded. That's not true of the Philippines, Guam, or Wake Island, all of which were attacked, all of which were conquered, um, populations were interned. Uh, the occupation of the Philippines by Japan was an absolutely brutal affair. Uh, the occupation and the subsequent U.S. reconquest of the Philippines, we think, killed, um, you know, maybe a million and a half people, as best we can tell, which is two, you know, two times the number of people who died in the Civil War. That's the bloodiest event that ever happened on U.S. soil, and that's barely in the U.S. history textbooks.